Hey, I'm Colin, and today I'm going to teach you how to build a beautiful Deschutes fireplace kit like this one. So we've got our box open. The first thing we're going to see, which is the most important, are the assembly instructions as well as the parts list. So I open this first page in here. It's going to show you everything that's supposed to be within this kit. If for some reason you're assembling your fireplace and you're missing a piece that's supposed to be on this parts list, please contact us. We can get it to you as soon as possible. Also, if the assembly instructions are damaged for some reason within the shipping process or from the time in which you built your fireplace, you can access it on our website. There's a PDF file on each fireplace page, or you can call us. And if you're local, we can get it to you as soon as possible. Step one is going to be preparing our base. Before we can do that, we obviously have to excavate. We require at least six inches of compact to three quarter minus gravel, so you need to be six inches below grade. Fortunately, we already had a machine in here for this patio project, so we just made sure we over excavated a couple extra inches there to have that extra base. Compacting in two inch lifts is crucial to have nice compaction, especially under a heavy fireplace like this. Uh, when you're pretty close to where you think it's nice and flat, I always like to take a level or a flat board, just rake out a nice area as flat as possible to make setting that first course of blocks easier. So now we can move on to step two, which is setting our base course. You're going to make sure and double check, make sure everything is nice and square and completely level both ways. The more square and level you are, the more square and level you will be able to maintain throughout your entire project. We're at our fourth course on this Deschutes fireplace kit, and as we're stacking each individual course, we're making sure to check level. So how we do that, we take a four foot or a six foot level. There's a level up here at the top for cross check. So it's gonna tell us for level straight up and down. So if you do this corner, then this corner, and then connect them once they're level, and split the indifferences with the blocks in between, you do that on all four sides, it'll be perfectly straight and level up and down. Uh, also, Every three or four courses, I'll stop and wait to let that glue dry for 15 to 20 minutes uh, because trying to keep everything square and straight, uh, the blocks will tend to want to slide. Um, if you let that glue firm up a little bit, it'll make it easier as you continue. So we're halfway through our fireplace build on this current project, and we're gonna talk a little bit about fire brick. Uh, so fire brick is basically uh, made of pumice and cement, and the act of fire brick is to make a heat uh, resistant barrier between this and our chateau wall block. Our chateau wall block can handle the heat, but it's gonna make them look a lot better if we have a nice barrier of fire brick in between them. So the way that we do that currently is the use of cement and water. You're gonna wanna make two batches. One batch is going to be a runny batch for your scratch coats. This helps penetrate the pores of both your fire brick and the inside walls of your fireplace for a tighter bond. Um, and then there's a thicker coat, which is going to be about a half inch thick, and that's going to be our adhesion coat, the thing that actually is going to bond them all together. So I'll demonstrate scraping a scratch coat on the fire brick for you. Just take a little bit. It's nice and runny. It's just going to smear across there. And when you scratch it with your trowel or whatever you're using, this trowel comes with the fireplace kit. It works pretty well. When you hear that scratch, that means it's a scratch coat. You don't need to cover the whole thing, just the majority of it. Take your thicker stuff, which you'll see the difference of here. Lay it on there about a half inch thick. And then all I do is I kind of bevel the sides to help taper it off. And then when I go to set this piece of fire brick up against my wall, I'll hammer it in very lightly to not break the fire brick. It will smear this cement out and make a nice tight bond.
we're going to go ahead and continue stacking our courses after that level of fire brick. Um, maintaining square, straight, and level is pretty crucial as for the aesthetic of the look of your fireplace when you're done, so keep that in mind. Uh, you're going to be stepping out for one course and in for about three courses. Uh, double check level and straight every time. You may notice as you're building your fireplace kit that you might have an occasional high spot in your blocks. So you have two options. You can either grind down that high spot if you have access to a diamond grinder wheel that usually is a little bit faster or because each kit comes with plastic polymer shims you can use the shims to make up the difference within the rest of your course of wall. Um, this takes a little bit more time but the objective is to use as minimal amount of shimming as possible therefore you don't have gaps up your fireplace because that's not aesthetically pleasing. All right, so we're at the step here with our fireplace kit where we need to put our angle iron. This is gonna be our bridge for our couple next horses of wall. Uh, more often than not, these notch cuts that come with the kit are a little bit overcut. Therefore, all you have to do is shove a nice plastic shim in there and snap it off to build your angle iron back up to level. Uh, sometimes, like this kit, they're cut just a little too shallow. So we're actually gonna take these off and shave them. You can do it with a masonry saw or a grinder with a diamond wheel. Whatever you have to do to get the angle iron to sit nice and level, you can do that. If you accidentally overcut those notch cuts, that's perfectly fine. Again, take a nice shim, shove it in there, break it off, make it nice and level. So we're at course 12 of this Deschutes fireplace kit, and this is the first course that's gonna be what's called tiering out. So we're gonna go out with this course here, one and seven eighths inches all the way around. So if you measure your block on opposite ends, here and here, get it one and seven eighths, take a level, then you connect them just like you did up the sides of your fireplace to keep level and straight up the sides. So after we've tiered this first course out about an inch and seven eighths all the way around, we're going to tier three courses in an inch and seven eighths all the way around to funnel in the chimney a little bit and give it a little bit more of a design look. This is course 15, it tiered in one more time. We're gonna continue straight up from here about five courses, then the last course, course 20, will tear out about an inch and seven eighths. So we're at the final step in assembling our Deschutes fireplace kit. So we're gonna install our metal chimney cap. We're gonna put a trim piece in here. Then we're gonna do the layout for our hearth traditionally you would set the base stones for your hearth at ground level with the base of your fireplace. Uh, but since we have a paving stone patio and that was installed afterwards, we're just gonna lay it right on top uh, to avoid some cutting against this angle set fireplace. We just filled it with gravel. That's perfectly fine. We're just gonna go ahead and lay our blocks on top of that. With these blocks in place, we can just put our hearth pieces right on top. If we need to shim them a little bit, we sure can. that's how you build a Deschutes fireplace kit. We advise that you wait at least 48 hours before you have a fire in there to let that cement behind your fire brick cure. If you want to know any more how-tos for hardscapes, check out DIY with WI.com.